Hello and welcome to a short video tutorial designed to help you encode your manuscripts using the Transcribe Bentham toolbar. This video tutorial is distinct from the Getting Started video in that I'm going to run through the encoding of a single manuscript and provide a Word document with the tags highlighted to give you a visible idea of how they work in turn. You might find it helpful to download the Word document before watching the rest of the video and have it to hand to consult as we move through the various stages. For an introduction to the principles of encoding, if you haven't already done so, I would recommend reading section 2 of the transcription guidelines uh, for the principles behind why you are asked to encode your transcripts, and the core guidelines in section 3 to briefly introduce you to the various tags generated by the toolbar. We are going to work on JB027 036003. As you can see from the image, it contains several of the most common elements you'll come across during the transcription process, including additions, deletions, headings, marginal notes, and superscript text. You'll note that there is no option to edit this transcript as it's completed and locked. Um, this is to prevent any further, for any further alterations. However, you can still see the encoded version by clicking on View Source above the manuscript number. I'll just do a quick bit of jargon busting before we begin. We begin. Uh, by encoding, I mean the tags which are contained in the transcript which identify the various features of the text in a way that allows them to be processed and rendered by a computer. And you can see this by clicking on view source and seeing the encoded version of the tra completed transcript. And by tags, I mean the string of characters surrounded by angle brackets which are generated by pressing one of the buttons on the transcription toolbar. These usually come in pairs and open and close, apart from in five cases, which we will cover during the tutorial. Now, the encoded version might look a little daunting to uh, new users, but if we break it down piece by piece, it will hopefully become a bit clearer. Everybody does their transcriptions differently. Some people like to transcribe the whole thing first, then add the tags later. Others add the tags as they go along. And since this tutorial is about demonstrating how the encoding works, I'm just uh, going to work here with um, a transcript where all the text has been completed and just the tags remain to be added. The Getting Started video will introduce you to the transcription process as a whole, and it would also be extremely boring to watch me type out an entire folio. And I mentioned earlier that most TEI tags open then contain the text needing to be encoded and then we have a closing tag. This is a principle which we can see at work in the first element of the uh, this transcript which we can see, uh, which is the headings. In this transcript we can see that there are two headings, general uh, two headings. There's the seven in the top right hand corner and how to measure here. Let's zoom in a bit. Um, generally speaking, anything situated above the main text should be regarded and tagged as a heading. And since the transcription here has been done, the easiest thing to do is to highlight each heading in turn and press the button to apply the header tags. So I'll do the 7 first, that's that one, and how to measure as well. These tags are coloured purple in the accompanying Word document. Um, I also mentioned earlier that of the various tags we use, five do not open and close, and two of these are present in the transcript. You can see the line breaks here, and here, and so on, in between the various lines showing where each line ends. And there's the illegible text button um, tag here, uh, to signify that the uh, word is illegible or it's just a fragment. <coughs> The, the other three, which are not present in this folio, are the tags for page break, for the ampersand, and for the m dash. And you'll notice in this transcript that each line um, has been transcribed on a separate line with the line breaks, uh, line break tags separating them. Now it's really down to personal preference how you set out your transcripts, and as long as the tags are in situ, it doesn't make any difference to how the finished transcript appears. I tend to do it this way simply because I find it easier to follow where each line begins and ends. 
The next tag we're going to have a look at is that for paragraphs, which is perhaps the most important tag, as everything you transcribe, with just two exceptions, must be enclosed by paragraph tags. These exceptions are page break tags, which can go both inside and outside the paragraph tags, and headings. So a paragraph tag cannot go inside a heading tag, and a heading tag cannot go inside a paragraph tag. It's quite helpful to think of the paragraph tags as the outer shell of your transcription with everything else tucked inside. And even if a page only has a single word or a fragment of a sentence, it should still be enclosed in paragraph tags. So we'll, uh, let's apply these ones. Uh, the easiest thing to do here is to highlight both of the paragraphs. So here's the first one. And there we go, and apply the paragraph tags using this button. And you can see it's been added at the beginning and the end of the paragraph. And the second one is just a case of going all the way down to the bottom. And that's that one done as well. So let's scroll back up. Um, in the Word document, the paragraph tags are colored blue, so you can see where, uh, where they've been applied. Uh, we're going to move on now to additions and deletions, um, which anyone who's taken even the most cursory look at the manuscript images on the site will notice that Bentman's scribes routinely delete and add matter all over the place, and this can be quite off-putting for a new user. We're going to deal here with the additions and the deletions in the same section, um, as they often go together in the text. Uh, in the Word document, Deletion tags are in brown and addition tags are in red. Um, where they go together, it's generally best to transcribe the deletion first, followed by the addition. So in the first instance, we can see that Bentham has deleted that. So we'll highlight that and apply the tags. And then added this as an alternative. So we'll apply the tags to that one. In the next example, which is to zoom out a little bit, we can see here that he's deleted part of two lines. Now you can either uh, add, apply the deletion tags um, here and then the same again here. Um, alternatively you can just go all the way through so you delete all of it at once which is probably the easiest thing to do. And uh, we can see that after this deletion uh, Bentham has written an alternative um, which he thought sounded better. So rather than but that pleasure is equal to it's now but the other pleasure is equal to this. Um, I'll just now add the rest of these um, and you can compare these to the Word document. So here he's deleted pleasure and added pain. And again here the obscure text has been deleted so even though that we even though we can't tell the word, we'll still encode it with the deletion tags to show um, what's going on. In the next paragraph, he's deleted here. If I say, so I'll take that away. Um, in the next one, he has added ten at the end of the line, which you can see here. So that's that. And the line below, zoom in a bit, see times as has been added. So there's the addition tags again. And he's deleted again here. So we'll apply those as well. Um, in the next line, a couple of lines down, he has added now. So just add that space there. Highlight that and add the tags. Um, in the line above, he's deleted but if, which you can see here. So apply those tags. Um, and finally, down in the bottom, you can see it's written the. Now this is what we call a catch word, which, le which will lead on into the next manuscript. We consider these as additions, so we'll apply the tag there. And again, this must be inside the paragraph tags. We'll move on now to marginal notes and again Bentham and his scribes often add things into the margins 
and a separate button is provided to mark these up. Where they should go is, again, often down to your judgement. Sometimes Bentham added asterisks or other signs to show where the notes should fit in, but there's no such mark in this instance. And we suggest that on occasions such as these, you add the note in at the end of the line next to the note. Uh, I should also add that line break tags should not be used inside note tags. So you can see here we're going to add it and the note to the end of the line, a common measure necessary to enable men to annex the same ideas in point of quantity to the same words. So we highlight the whole thing and apply the note tags. And in the Word documents, note tags are in pink. Now we'll take a quick look at the unusual spelling or misspelling tags, which are signified here by the sick uh, button. Now these are used for encoding Bentham's often uh, idiosyncratic spelling or any other mistakes. And there's one example in this transcript. If we uh, scroll down, and we can see here uh, St. Paul's Bentham has missed an apostrophe. So we head on down, find that, highlight it, and add the sick tags. Um, these tags are turquoise in the Word document. Finally, uh, we'll have a quick look at the superscript tags. Now these are for um, signifying superscript text, such as the TH in fourth, or the T in the contracted ST for Saint. Uh, they shouldn't, should not be used for added text and vice versa. So the only ones that are present in this transcript are in um, where Bentham has written Saint. So there's one here. So you, just, you only need to highlight the T, which is um, superscript, and we apply the superscript button, which is this one. There's the first. There's another one here. And another one here. There we go. And the superscript tags are orange in the Word document. The uh, only tags we haven't mentioned so far in this uh, tutorial are those for foreign text, which is this one and for underlining. Now these work on the same principles as the others. Um, you highlight the text and apply the tags. And they do what they say on the tin. They will underline things and signify uh, non-English text. And that is uh, that. Um, I hope this tutorial has been of some use in showing you the main features of encoding and do feel free to consult the completed transcripts page for further examples. Uh, new users or those wishing to get started on the encoding process may wish to select a manuscript from box 115 um, as a starting point. Uh, a great deal of material in this box is either printed or copied out in a fair hand by one of Bentham's scribes. Thus it's much easier to read and you can familiarise yourself with the encoding process before also taking on Bentham's own handwriting. If there are any other issues which you uh, feel need addressing, or you would like any more videos making uh, help, then please do drop the team a line at transcribe.bentham at ucl.ac.uk. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video and for your interest in the project, and we hope you enjoy transcribing. Thank you very much.